the world is full of wonders. Mountains and rivers and trees, factories and trains, towers of Eiffel and Babel, big things and small. But the humblest man is master of them all. The world's glory is its people. And if a country is small and poor, like Ireland, then its people are a treasure of greater price. In the west of Ireland, there is a great beauty that surpasses any song that was written about it. A changeless beauty of mountain and lake and winding road. There is only one thing. The men who lived between the mountains have taken the winding road to the city. A man cannot live on beauty and he cannot support his family on folklore, even on a folklore that is older than Maeve and richer than Armada Gold. A man does not close his door lightly. He does not leave his fields without a great yearning. The bright city lights may call, but only the fool believes that he will find High Brassel. And yet a man must go. Or stay for what? For a place with the old who are too old to go? Or never had the courage or the money or stay and watch the weeds grow round the door. Or stay and watch the young return on holidays, all changed. Or stay and sigh for the children who do not return at all. I'm 80 now. I lived my life on the side of this mountain, and I know every inch of it. I have never seen the bright lights, I was never in Dublin, only to the fairs in the town below. And 20 miles to a football match was a day's journey on the bike. I remember the good days, the dance at the crossroads, the crowds that gathered for the threshing, the regatta on the river. I remember the crowds of young people and the noise that they made and the devilment they were up to. I took a hand in the devilment too, long ago. Then I married Mary. I hadn't much to offer her on the side of the mountain, but she never asked for much, and she never complained. We had five children, and we did our best for them. There are plenty of schools now, but they got a better education than I did. They were good children, and I squeezed what I could for them out of the few fields. Then the finished school, and grew up before we knew it, and one by one they went away. They did well for themselves, and I don't begrudge them, but I didn't realize that one day they would all be gone. They come back to see us, of course, but not so much now since they're married and settled down. I'm a grandfather now this many years, and Mary inside is a grandmother. But we're alone, the two of us. We don't say it to each other, but we're often lonely. The few fields are not worth much, and the little house is no mansion. But when I walk the side of the mountain, I am sorry to think that none of my own will walk it after me. But we are not the only ones. There are many doors closing. 
There's no dancing at the crossroads now, and very few cries of children playing in the evenings. I don't know. Maybe it had to be. And the young ones that come back look grand. And they've great stories to tell about life in the cities. But there were good times here too. And I doubt there's nothing in the city to match the sun shining on the mountains. Some stones remember happy days. I see the little children play in fields where summer lingered long. When winter came, they went away. In the West, we are not the women of the songs or the stories, of the Galway shawl or the riders to the sea. Our life is romantic only when you watch it from beyond the shanty. It is a long road to the supermarket. The theatre festivals and the opera seasons do not come to our town land at all. We envy you for what you call your amenities. On the other hand, we have space and green fields and flowers wild in spring and fresh air for our children. And maybe you envy us these things from east of the Shannon. You come running down here in summer for your few weeks of holidays. And sometimes we run to the city to spend our few spare shillings. Where is the happy life? Where is the romantic life? No one knows. Perhaps we are foolish. But I think we would swap places more quickly than you. Look at the empty houses. Look at the bachelors who could not find a woman. They are witnesses that ours is not the easy way. I'm 48 now, a farmer, and not a bad few fields compared with some. I can't say I had it easy. My father saw to that. You see, I was the oldest, so I was broken in early. The younger ones left because they knew there was nothing for them here at home. It was obvious I would be left the place, being the oldest. I thought how lucky I was, and worked like a horse. But the old man didn't get around to signing the place over until it was too late. Too late to enjoy it. Too late to build on my young ambitions. Too late to marry. I couldn't bring in a woman without the place in my name. She'd be kicked back to the parish she came from. I thought about this with the old fella. Sometimes I tried to coax him, but nothing worked. The years passed, and the few women in the area were picked up. When the old man signed over on his deathbed, I looked around, and there wasn't a woman left. My mother lived on and looked after me and I didn't feel the pinch until she died last year. But now I feel the night's lonely and I never learned how to look after myself and cook a bit. And why should I? It's a woman's job. And my heart isn't in the work either the way it used to be. I say to myself, what am I slaving for? 
There will be no son or daughter to enjoy the fruits of my effort. When the time comes, I suppose I'll leave it all to some niece or nephew from Dublin. And they'll sell it like it didn't matter at all. The old house that holds all my memories will be closed up until it falls. My fields will belong to someone I never knew. I'll be a part of nobody's history but my own. There's a big mountain at the back of our house. I climbed it once with my daddy. And from the top you can see for miles and miles. You can see lakes and islands, hundreds of islands. And little boats sailing in and out. My daddy said he will buy me a boat. A big boat with a white sail. I'm seven now and I go to school. My daddy used to be a fisherman. And he had a big boat with an engine. He would be away for days at a time. And whenever there was a big storm, my mommy would be very worried that something would happen. But my daddy doesn't fish anymore. He said there wasn't enough money. He said the foreigners were catching all the fish in their big boats. And his boat was too small. He sold it. And all the other fishermen sold their boats too. My mommy says she's glad. She used to have to work in the fields, at the hay and all. And now my daddy does the work and stays at home every night. There isn't as much money. But when there's a storm, mommy says, thank God daddy's not out in the storm. What is it that makes a land rich or poor? The western seaboard is neither rich nor poor, no more than any other area of the universe. There are more barren acres on the moon, and men have given their lives and billions of pounds to visit its lifeless craters for a few hours. There are arid deserts around the world that spew up millions of gallons of oil. And there are less spectacular little acres everywhere where the stones can be turned to gold. History has shown that men can walk 10 feet tall on ground where not even weeds will grow. It would be romantic to think that a chosen race could live on the fresh sea air and burnished sunsets. So who will put the bread on our table and the clothes on our back and the money in our pocket? Are the bread and the money only in the city and not among the hills? Break your long silence and tell me the secret of these hills and why long ago my ancestors bothered to build roads among them. Tell me about every bush and every boat that went to sea. Tell me the stories of saints and sinners, of heroes and villains before television, before the tourists came. I don't want to live in the past, but I want to build my future on something grand and noble. Teach me pride. Fire my imagination. Inspire me. One crooked stone was Oh, stone, have you no song to see? My tale is no I once was tombstone to a king A heap of stones, a scattered wall 
What man will build a wall anew? What man will build a tear? 